So I hope your shot was successful and you have now some lights, some calibration frames, and you wonder what to do with all these pictures. That's what we cover in this part of the Astrophotography Basecamp, right after the trailer. So what we have to do now with all these files, with all these pictures, is that we stack them. And we already covered that in the shooting theory, what stacking means. That we're putting all these pictures one over the other and see what's common, which is the signal, and what's different, what is the noise. And we try to get to as good as possible signal to noise ratio. And the calibration frames we need to deduct all the defects, all the noise from our camera, from our optical path. And with all of that, we should get a nice picture which we can then process. So there's a lot of software out there which can do this stacking. And there is one important thing you have to know from the start. The result you get from stacking in one application or the other will be almost the same. There is no magical formula to stack substantially better based on different software algorithms or anything like that. Stacking is stacking. So what differentiates these different applications? On one side, speed. Some are faster than the others. Second, ease of use. Some are more intuitive. Some are integrated in a processing software, which makes it easier. And the third part is features. We have in certain applications features we do not have in others. And the fourth probably would be that some of these softwares are only available for certain operating systems. So for this opportunity here, I will pick four. And that's Deep Sky Stacker, that's Serial, that's AstroPixel Processor, also called App, and that's PixInsight. And two of them we will look afterwards on my computer and I will show you there how I really stack. Let's start with Deep Sky Stacker. The pro is, it's free. You can download it, link is in the description below. It does only stacking, as the name already hints. So you cannot process your pictures with it, but you can stack it. Deep Sky Stacker is only available for PC. You cannot use it on a Mac. Personally, I would say it's the no frills solution. If you just need a stacker, you don't want to spend any money, you want to try it, just download it, use it. The second software is Serial. Also, Serial is free. It's available for PC and for Mac. Also here, I put the link in the description below. You can, without any risk, download it and try it out. Serial is not only a stacking software, but also a processing software. So it offers you everything that you need from the stacking to your final picture. And given that it's relatively good and it's free, it's quite a good offer. With that, we come to Astro Pixel Processor app. App is a paid software. It's available for PC and Mac. It is theoretically a stacking and processing software, but to be honest, the processing part you can or you should forget. I sometimes have a feeling that the creators of app, they did the stacking part and then they felt probably we should also do some processing functionality for the people who want to use it as a whole. So they entered some stuff there, but it's by far not as good as other solutions. But when we come to the stacking, from my point of view, Astro Pixel Processor is the best stacking program available presently. I personally stack exclusively with that. The reason is that I find it very convenient, the way it's designed. 
that it's extremely fast and that it offers a lot of functionality which you wouldn't find with another solution. And with that we come to number four and that's PixInsight. PixInsight is also a paid software. You can also have it for PC and for Mac and it is the gold standard in our days when it comes to processing. And we will cover that in the next part of this series. When it comes to stacking, PixInsight is definitely not bad. And given it has a quite high price, a lot of people will stick from a stacking point of view with PixInsight. It has some advantages if you do that. For example, that it will solve your picture. So it will tell the picture already in the stacking where it's located that helps you later on in the process. Now, which ones of these four solutions is for you? It is for a beginner quite tempting to go with one of the free solutions as they are free. And you might not be 100% sure yet if this is really a hobby for you. And you might argue a little bit like, well, I use now Serial or Deep Sky Stacker and once I'm further progressed in the hobby, then I will switch if needed to, for example, PixInsight. From my point of view, the issue with that is that also Serial or Deep Sky Stacker also needs to be learned. It's not self-explanatory. So you're using a lot of time to get good at Serial, for example. And if you're serious about a hobby, at a point you will anyway come to the conclusion you have to move to PixInsight and then you have to relearn everything. And there is also to say that PixInsight has a quite generous trial period. So you can really download PixInsight for free and use it with the full functionality for quite some time before you have to make your decision if that's for you or not. So what does this all mean? From my point of view, if you are on a budget and you really have to squeeze every dollar to get to some solution to make astrophotography happen, then by all means go with Serial. I would rather use Serial than Deep Sky Stacker as Serial is a fully integrated suite where you can do everything from the stacking to the processing. The same is true if you're really not sure at all if this is something for you and you're at the moment stacking with pictures which come from someone else or you just took with your DSLR or anything like that. Then it's great to have some no risk free solution which you can use. But if you are already quite sure that this is it, if you're putting a lot of money down for equipment, then please start right away with PixInsight. You can download it for free. You can first try it out and really see and experience with your own eyes what it can do. And only when you're convinced, then you can actually pay the around $300 that it costs. When it comes to AstroPixel processor, that's really the luxury solution. If money is not really an issue for you, and you want the best of everything, then having PixInsight for the processing and AstroPixel processor for the stacking is obviously the perfect solution. Let's go now to my PC and have a look at PixInsight and at AstroPixel processor. Okay, welcome to my computer. So the first of the two stacking applications we're looking at is App. Just in general, whenever we talk about astrophotography software, never ever expect something like with a good user interface, something modern, easy to use. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's, that's just the reality. And if you look at app, it looks like a 90s application on Windows 3.1 or a Commodore 64. I don't know. But given that all the other solutions are also not looking better, um, yeah, that's just how it is. So I obviously did a full tutorial on how to stack in 
app and I put a link in the description below. At the moment, all I want to do is give you a feel how this actually works. So as you can see here, here I actually can enter all the pictures that I shot and I start here with the lights and here I actually have my lights so I select them. So you see now I have here 184 subs of the cone nebula. I can also give it here a name and then here I can enter the calibration frames. The first time I have to enter all the calibration frames for the second time afterwards, um, it creates a master, which I can add then down here. So here I have now my flats, short for the narrowband filter that I used here. So I make open, and then I can also add the bias frames. And that's actually all what we need with this camera. The flats, the bias, and the lights. The rest we do now all in these tabs. So we can change stuff with the calibration if we have to, with the star analysis, with the registration, to normalize it and how to integrate it. But the good part is that most of this you can leave at default. But this here is for example a great feature. Out of the 184 pictures, I want that 20% uh, that are the worst, they're not included in the stacking. So it automatically kicks them out. And when I have looked at all of that and I'm happy, then I just click here on integrate and it starts to stack. Now, as I said, app is at least on the Mac massively, massively faster than PixInsight. But that still doesn't mean that this goes now within a few minutes. This might still take a few hours with 184 pictures until this is actually stacked. That's just important to understand. Now, the other alternative that you have is PixInsight. That's how PixInsight looks like. It looks originally much cleaner than App, much more modern, but it's also a nightmare from the user interface point of view. But fear not, I have great tutorials. You will also find the links to them in the description below and we will cover everything in these tutorials, the stacking part as well as the processing part. You would assume that stacking, which is something so fundamental, is one of the key processes here, but it's actually not. It's a script which is comprised out of various processes here. So you really have to look for that on the batch processing where you will find the weighted batch pre-processing. It's not called stacking or something like that. It's called weighted batch pre-processing. And that's how you stack in PixInsight. So here actually we see the same a little bit as we saw before in app. Down here you have these plus signs for the lights, for the flats, for the bias. A special feature that WBPP, how we call that, has is that you can simply add a directory. If you have all of the stuff in there, it will actually sort it out itself. Sometimes, if it likes the nomenclature you put on the files, if it doesn't like it, it will make a big mess out of it. So when rarely I stack here, I actually do that separately because I really don't trust Pix inside with that. So here again, we go lights, and now we do exactly the same thing again as before. We say open, so we're added them here, and now we would do the same with the flats. So you see them now here, they're now up here in these buckets, the lights and the flats. And now we can also add the bias. Okay, once we've done that, we can go into calibration. There you see now the lights that we have the flats, and the bias, everything is green. With that, we can also go into post calibration, check here that everything is correct, usually it is. And then we actually say run, everything in the diagnostics is green. We say continue, and now it will also start here to stack. So I will wait now until this is finished, and then we will look at the results together. Okay, and after hours and hours of stacking, the picture is finally here and I'm sure you want to see it in all its beauty. Here it is. And if you think now that I'm kidding, I don't. 
that's the picture. So what's going on? The issue is that the nebulosity of the co-nebula that we actually captured, that's very faint. So when we show the whole spectrum from completely dark to completely white, this faint nebulosity is still practically dark and you will not see it. And we call this a linear picture. So we chose everything from completely dark to completely white. And so that we actually can see the nebulosity, we have to use a little trick which we call stretching. So that this small part at the very dark side, that we actually stretch this and show this in an overproportional way. And we can do that here in Pix Inside with simply a push of a button. And look how much more beautiful it um you might ask, what's now? Now when we shoot a color picture, so one shot color, then we shoot as we have learned with a Bayer matrix. And a Bayer matrix usually is RGGB. One pixel red, one pixel blue, and two pixel greens, because we have so much green on our earth that when we do normal photography we want to really capture all the different shades of green. But now in such a picture the green is obviously overrepresented. Anyway, way way overrepresented because in space you do not find so much green. So again use now a little trick. Okay and so now that I actually put this all in the right relation, now you actually see here very faintly the cone nebula and all this red, that's the nebulosity. And I'm sure you're still very, very much underwhelmed. So we spent now all this night outside and then we stacked for hours and hour and this tiny little bit of nebulosity, that's what we get out of here, really? Really. And that's why processing is so crucial in astrophotography because processing makes that out of this kind of underwhelming picture, we will get a stellar picture out of it. So now you have one picture, a master light, as we call it. This is still not a very spectacular picture. It's not a picture you can show around, but it's the foundation that you use for doing now the processing. And the processing is what we're doing in the next part. Until then, clear skies.